Hey guys, CBTuber. Today I'm gonna to show you how to do this really easy comp. We're gonna take some stock footage and I'm going to comp it onto this old time TV. And the reason we're gonna do it this way is because we're trying to maintain all of the dirt and the grime that you see on the screen, but we also want to keep all of the shadowed reflections that are on the screen because we're gonna try and make it a little bit more realistic rather than this be maybe a hero shot that we would see inside of like a TV commercial. This is going to be maybe more of a realistic background prop that would be somewhere in your scene. All right, so let's go ahead and I can go ahead and delete this and I'm just gonna bring down a brand new Fusion composition and jump over to Fusion. Here we are in Fusion. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a couple assets. The first one I'm gonna bring in is the actual TV that we're gonna be using. It's going to be this TV. This is just a free image that I found off the internet. It's on Pixabay. The link will be down in the description. And if you wanna follow along, we're also going to be using this footage. There's a little bit of movement in it, not a whole lot. There's absolutely no movement inside of the TV footage. This is actually just a picture, a still image, one snapshot. So we're going to be using this and we're not going to be doing any kind of tracking or anything like that. We're just going to be comping this video footage onto the TV screen so that we can maintain all of the highlights and all of the shadows that are actually on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is before connecting any of these to my media out, I actually want to bring in a background because I want to set that background resolution to 1920 by 1080p. And we can see it's just a black background and that's okay. We're gonna rename these medias just so I can keep them straight. So F2 on my keyboard, type in TV for this one. And this one can just be footage. Because the TV is going to be on the bottom and the footage is going to be on the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and merge the TV in first, farther to the left, going to drop the output of the TV onto the output of the background node. The footage, I'm just gonna bring it over a little bit and I'm going to drop the footage output onto the merge one output for the TV out. Now if we can continue to look at this media out on the main screen here, what we'll see is that because the footage is farther to the right, it is on the top of everything else. And that's exactly the way we want it for now. I'm going to go ahead and bring in a second screen so I can leave this media out over here on the right. And I'm going to take this TV footage and I'm just going to drop it in on the left. Let's take a look at this TV real quick. We have some dirt clumps on here that actually won't look very good on the screen. It's going to have some weird issues. So I'm probably going to remove maybe this, all of that. I'll paint that out. And then I will leave all of this in there because I really want all of the textures, all the scratches, all the dirt, all the dust and the sand. And of course, I want to maintain the TV. We could also cut the TV out if we were going to place it on some kind of other scene. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually just going to leave it as it is. And if you are going to do that for your footage, you can use the exact same process of cutting it out that we're going to be using to cut out the screen. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in here and I'm just going to start painting these things out. And to do that with the TV selected, I'm just going to bring in a paint node. And in the paint node, I'm going to come up to stroke and then over to the right, I'm going to pick a soft brush, maybe size it up a little bit. And I'm going to come over to the apply mode and I want a clone apply mode mode. Now I'm just going to take this paint, load it into my viewer so I can actually see it. Maybe turn the softness up a little bit. And the way that the clone paint actually works is I need to use the option or alt key to pick a spot to clone from, and then I can go ahead and paint that clone. I'm just going to pick this ambient occlusion area right next to it. I'm going to go ahead and hit alt key, move over to the right a little bit and go ahead and start it right here. And then just kind of paint down a little bit until it just disappears. And that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a bump there, but nobody's ever going to notice that. All right, and then so over here, we're probably gonna want maybe a larger section. So let me go ahead and size it up even larger. Maybe I'll pick something over here, not too far away because we don't want a difference in color shift. And I'm just going to slowly paint this out a little bit until it starts to go away. Now, if I do it too much, it's going to be too soft because we have a good amount of softness on there. We just want to knock off some of the dirt and so if you just kind of wiggle it around a little bit, it'll start to knock the dirt off, which is exactly what we want. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and command, scroll out, see if I can notice. I can definitely see a little bit of smudging on there. And in order to maybe reintroduce some of that pattern, we can go ahead and bring the softness down a little bit, pick a spot that has some pattern, and we can just kind of hit a couple clicks 
and then hit a couple clicks. And what that's gonna do is that's going to reintroduce some of that pattern. Because the softness is actually what's going to kind of destroy your pattern and make it very soft looking, which we don't necessarily want. All right, so down here, we'll see that some of this, when we actually move and transform, it may end up looking a little weird. This little dot right here, that's going to be replicated. I don't want to see that, so maybe a little bit further, right on the corner here, so I can have a better chance of painting that out. That looks pretty good. Some of this will still look a little bit replicated, but that's okay. We're not gonna be able to get it absolutely perfect. We do wanna take this little spot out here. For that, I'm going to size my brush down, maybe pick something just above it, come down and just paint it out right there. That looks pretty good. Again, you don't wanna go overboard because if you go overboard, it's definitely gonna be noticeable. And so we used stroke versus multi-stroke so that we didn't have to come down to stroke controls and ensure that we turned on all frames or change the actual duration. If it's on stroke, you do not have to do that it's a little bit easier all right so that is painted out and i'm going to go ahead and call that part done the next thing we're going to need to do is we're actually going to need to resize this because this is 1920 by 1280 we want it to be 1920 by 1080 after the paint go ahead and shift space type in xf to bring in a transform node and let's go ahead and look at it in the merge view we can see that we're going to need to maybe just size it down just a little bit maybe even bring it down a little bit and that will probably work. Now we have these black bars over here on the right, and that means that we've cropped the image. So let's go ahead and come into the transform. And in the edges, we're just going to bring it down to mirror, which is why we took out that little brown spot, because when we mirror it, we'll notice the duplicated brown spot over here on the right. We do see a little bit of duplication here. We can see that it kind of caves in just right here on this spot, but that's okay. I think it's fairly unnoticeable. Again, if this was going to be used in a shot, what we would actually do is we would mask out the entire TV and we would place it somewhere else in another shot. So for the sake of this demo, we're gonna go ahead and call that pretty dang good. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next stage, which is gonna be addressing the footage. So over here on the footage, we see that obviously it's 1920 by 1080. It's very large. We need to fit it on this small TV. Now there's a bunch of different ways we can do this, but the easiest way to do this is actually just to use a corner positioning node, which is a form of a transform node. So let's go ahead and shift space, type in the word corner going to bring in the corner positioner go ahead and hit add now what that's going to do is that's going to drop down four corners and wherever you place these corners is going to be the aspect and the angle for your actual footage now we're not going to use this to do the final placement we are still going to use a mask in order to cut it out so that it'll look correct we're just going to use this to actually move this footage so that the angle matches the angle of the tv now this would be more apparent if our tv was slightly skewed or if it was at an angle but for right now all all it's gonna do is essentially it's going to superimpose that image over our TV. Now, if I was to come in here and maybe start to blend this down, you'll see how the TV is now behind the footage and this is going to be the basis for our comp. Let me come back over here and I'm going to blend that back up. So although our footage is on the TV and it's placed in the area that we want it, it still doesn't look right and that's because everything that's on somewhat of a concave or convex plane should actually match that plane. So if you're doing any kind of effect, one thing you always have to take in consideration is the distortion of the lens or the distortion of the actual object. One thing we can easily bring in is shift space. We can bring in a lens distort and we can actually add that distortion onto the screen. Now we're not gonna take into effect the actual lens distortion of the lens of the camera. We're only going to use the lens distort to fake a distortion for the actual screen. So let's go ahead and change the mode from undistort to distort, come down to the distortion model. And over here in the distortion, I'm just going to double click and type in 0.3. Now you can see that we've already distorted that onto that screen. Now what it's gonna do is it's going to better match the actual shape of that screen. Now let's come into the distort. We obviously can see that it's a little too small. So let's go ahead and use another transform, ensuring that our pivot is actually in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this pivot off to the side, and then I'm just going to place it in the center of the screen, which it's pretty close, but it's a little bit off. And now I'm going to hold my command key while I size this up just a little bit. I just need it to push beyond the bounds of the actual TV screen. And now I can go ahead and grab all of this. I can move it up a little bit. And the next part of this comp is actually going to be creating creating a mask around this screen so that we can actually cut the edges off of this footage. So it'll look like it sits on that TV just a little bit better. With nothing selected, I'm gonna bring in a polygon mask tool and I'm actually gonna be looking at this merge over here while I build this out. 
go ahead and give myself a little bit more real estate and I'm gonna scroll in till I can see this TV in all its glory. And I'm just gonna start creating a mask all the way around the edge. Now, the more effort and the more time that you spend on this mask, the better your overall effect is going to look. Also, when you're masking, try to create your mask in the best possible way by adding as much shape as you need, but as few points as possible. And you can always come back through and get rid of points later. But anytime doing angles, if you can get away with using very few points, your mask will be a little bit easier to manage later on. Usually when I'm doing corners, I'll only give it anywhere from three to four points max. And you can always come in and you can use the Shift S key in order to smooth those out a little bit later. Um, I'm definitely gonna come in here and I'm going to be finessing this. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select all these points and then hit my Shift S and that's going to smooth those tangent handles out a little bit. Now if we look in here, we can see that it's a little off. I'm going to go ahead and come in individually and just move each one of these points to maybe a slightly better spot. Also keep in mind that you can delete any of these points that you don't feel you absolutely need. Like this point right here, I don't need that. I can go ahead and delete it. It's not really doing much. You can also add points. If I if I come up to a point where I feel like I need a little bit more geometry, like maybe I don't like that point, I can go ahead and delete it and then I can add a point right there and I can go ahead and move that geometry a little bit if I need to. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the polygon by itself. Let's go ahead and look at the poly. It looks pretty smooth, which is good. You don't want any jaggedness. Now I can just take this polygon and I need to mask out this TV, but how do I do that? So I could bring this polygon and I could mask it into the merge node and that definitely would work, but I don't like controlling my masks like that. I like to be able to control the actual level of the masks independently. And sometimes you're gonna to wanna to add different effects into the merge node. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to bring in a black background. And in this black background, I'm actually going to take the alpha and I'm gonna turn it all the way down. What this is doing is this is giving me a transparent canvas in order to mask. Now I'm gonna take this background, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the footage node flow and I'm going to take the output of the transform and I'm gonna drop it on the output of the background. What I'm doing is I'm using this background now as an actual background, whereas I can mask out the foreground using my new polygon mask. If we take a look at that, what we've done is we've just used this mask to mask out the foreground image. So if we look at what it was doing before, we had distorted it the way that we wanted, but now we've actually masked it to fit the actual screen size. So now when I bring that in to the TV, we can see that we've gone ahead and we've masked it onto the TV. Obviously that doesn't look real. We see way too much and we have none of the detail that we should have had in the screen. So let's see how we can go ahead and do that. One thing I really want is I want all of these reflections that are behind the camera that are being reflected inside of the screen. I also want to keep a lot of this dirt. Now we got rid of some of the big dirt because we didn't want that to cover up our footage, but you can leave in as much dirt as you want. You can leave it all in if you like. Now, in order to superimpose this onto the screen to maintain all the shadows, but also bring in all these highlights, there's an actual apply mode that is made just to do that. And that's the overlay apply mode. It essentially uses a screen or an additive in addition to a multiply or darkening mode. So it's going to keep all of the shadows, but it's also going to maintain all of the highlights. So inside of the apply mode in the merge, we're just going to come down to the apply mode where it says normal. We're going to bring it down to overlay. And now if we take a look at our comp screen, we can see that we maintain all of that ambient occlusion, which is really nice. It's that shadow that's really close to the actual edge here. We also have all of the dirt and the grime and the dust and the scratches. And if you zoom out a little bit, you can actually tell that we've maintained the shadows or the reflection of the shadows in the background, which is really cool. And one thing you can do to even make it blend a little bit better is you can actually come into the merge node itself and you can start to blend this down. Cause I remember as a kid, when we would watch on old CRT TVs, it was always really hard to watch TV when there was some kind of light or like an open window behind you. And it was very frustrating. In fact, you wouldn't be able to see the screen very well. So that's actually realistic that you would down the blend a little bit to make the screen show a little bit more because it's harder to see. And not to mention there was this very shiny glass that just would reflect like nobody's business. We can actually do a few different things to make this footage look like it belongs a little bit more in that TV. One of the things we can do is after this transform note, I'm gonna wanna distress my footage to make it look like maybe it was shot 20 years ago. Now in order to do that, I actually made a tool called the VHS tool. Now it's not out just yet as of filming this, but it will be out within the next week or so. So in order to add it, I'm just gonna shift space, type in VHS, 
And what that's going to do is that's going to distress my footage quite nice. And it's probably got a little too much grain. I'm going to go ahead and turn the grain down. And there we go. That looks terrible. This is exactly what that note is supposed to do. One more thing that I want to do, and that's I want to color correct just a little bit. So I'm going to shift space, bring in a color correction node. And inside the range, I'm just going to go down to the shadows. I want to lift those shadows a little bit. So the lift is the shadows. If I go ahead and just pull it a little bit to the right, what that's going to do is that's going to take the darkness of the shadows and it's going to bring it up a little bit because I want it to be a little bit more realistic that there's no way that this TV is going to replicate the perfect darkness and shadows that we see in the real world or what we're pretending is the real world. All right, we could also do that with the highlights, but the highlights are just fine. They're actually already quite mute. So there's one more thing that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in back into the master and I'm just gonna take the saturation levels down just a little bit because they're a little bit high even for this background image. So that's a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and call that good and I'm gonna come back into this merge node and I'm gonna go ahead and blend that back down just so I can see a little bit more of the glare off the screen. All right, so that looks pretty good. And I know that looks fairly mute, but again, this is for an asset that would be in a video that is not necessarily going to be drawing attention away from whatever is taking place inside of the screen. This is something that we would go ahead and mask out and we would put it maybe on a table somewhere and it would just be another object or another prop, but we want to put something on the screen. All right, now we can just jump back over. We can kind of take a look at the final result. I'm going to go ahead and let this cache because the VHS node is a very heavy tool. It will take probably anywhere from three to five minutes for this to cache. All right, so that took probably about five, five to eight minutes to cache. Let's go ahead and take a look at the final result. Yeah, all right, I like it. It looks pretty good. And again, this is a fairly subtle look. It's fairly muted look. We're trying to make it look as realistic as possible. We could even bring the opacity down even more, but I think that this would work. I could go ahead and mask this out, put it in the background. You probably wouldn't even look at it twice. You would just think that, oh, okay, it looks like a VHS type footage on a, maybe a CCTV or something of that nature. All right, so that's pretty much it for me. I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you guys like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.